Okay, so today's video is going to be about my version 14 3D printed speaker. Uh, I'm calling this Project Yellow Jacket for some very obvious color reasons, as you'll see in the build process. Um, so to start things off, big changes have been made to the motor. Um, first and foremost, it is now a vented motor. So instead of compacting the magnets around the... Um, in an array. I've actually spaced them out and added in vent holes into the motor to allow air to be pushed in and out of the motor to help cool the coil and keep the magnets co uh, cooler. Also to combat the heat I have moved away from PETG as my primary cone and former material and I've moved towards ASA. This has both the benefit of higher um, glass transition temperature as well as a lower density. So ASA has a density of about 1.04 grams per centimeter cubed, whereas PETG has about 1.24 or 27 grams per centimeter cubed. So I shed about 80% or I shed about 20% of the weight retaining 80% just by changing material. So the surrounds, um, I stuck with the same kind of thing that I did on the miniature speaker. I went with a sine wave to generate the side profile of both the surround and the spider. After some various testing with different designs, I've come to realize that the sine wave or cosine wave, a very gradual up and down, seems to give the most flexibility to the spider and the surround letting the speaker move as freely as it can and reducing resistance to the motor. This seems to help it become a more efficient design by just not having as much mechanical resistance to flexing. The box is a hexagonal design. I went with a round internal port on this instead of hexagonal as I've heard that when you have sharp corners inside of a port you can have high airflow speeds through those corners and as you move to the center you get less airflow and those little high speed pockets of air towards the outside can lead to chuffing and port noise and so a round port is the easiest way to just reduce port chuffing and port noise and then both ends have a tiny flare on them I think it's a five millimeter radius on both ends um, internal and external the box is a 4.6 liter internal volume so that's what is actually internal free space in here um, with the speaker and everything included there's 4.6 liters of air internal of the speaker it is tuned to 85 Hertz which is probably a little high the enclosure is printed out of pet G um, as are all of the non heat dependent components of the driver itself so the frame um, a lot of the outer motor basket parts, um, a lot of that's printed in PETG along with the enclosure. Um, this enclosure is kind of hefty, using approximately 800 grams of filament, so it does take quite a bit to print this guy. So yeah, um, those are kind of all the things that have changed and what I came to a conclusion for version 14. So we'll get into the playtest, and then we'll get into some of the REW and DAT systems, and then I'll meet you guys back here. Before that, a word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers a multitude of services, including 3D printing, CNC, and PCB manufacturing. If you're in the market to have a project like this come to life, they can help out with any of the manufacturing processes that this would entail. And they offer $5 off your first order of 10 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter PCBs. You only pay the shipping and handling on that. So check them out at PCBWay.com today.
Okay, so we're starting off in DATS, the Dayton Audio Testing System. This is using the Dayton Audio Testing System version 3 control box or measurement box or whatever you want to call it. Um, so as we can see this motor, I'm actually getting a peak. Um, this is something that I've kind of been after for a while. Uh, I've been having an issue getting this. So this is what kind of signifies that a motor is working properly. And the higher the peak, usually that indicates the stronger the motor, the more effect it's having on the coil. At least that's how I've interpreted it so far. Um, so a lot of my speakers before have just been a lot of noise, kind of like we're seeing up in this area. But yeah, we can see all of the TS parameters that were pulled using the DATS here. We have a four inch driver, as I um, explained, that's four inch from the center of the surround to the center of the surround. So um, pretty much halfway of the surround. Um, it is almost 72 and a half decibels supplied with one watt at one meter. Um, it's an 8 ohm voice coil on this, so it's roughly 7.2 ohms wrapped. It really should be closer to about 6 something, but uh, the resonant frequency is down around 65, which is the lowest that I've ever had a resonance frequency of one of the speakers I've built. Um, all the cues are kind of falling in at least normal. I didn't have a bunch of variations because I run these tests about 10 to 15 times to see how much variation there is between them. And on some of the previous speakers, I was getting huge variations in cues, which is not good because they should not move that much. If you get a couple points difference, it's probably not the end of the world. But I was having cues that were moving up by four and five points. I don't know what they're measuring, but they're moving up by four or five points. But this is the TS parameters and the DATs. We'll move on to REW now. So here in REW, we are looking at um, these two plots. Um, so the red plot is the port, and the green plot is the cone. And like I said, there's this 50 hertz drop right here. Um, not quite sure what was causing that, but um, it's something I'm going to look into. I'm probably going to talk to um, see if Paul with Polymate knows anything about what's going on here. Um, he's been quite helpful in my venture of building speakers. So big shout out to that guy. Um, and then we can see that that dip is completely gone from the port. So I'm not sure if it has something to do with a tuning frequency or something like that. But this box was supposed to be tuned around the 85 hertz range and as we can see it does peak closer to 100 and something hertz. Like I said the port tuning probably was a little off because I flared some edges and I did have that 90 degree bend inside so it's kind of hard to really figure exactly what that port's going to be without a ton of extra measuring in CAD. And for this project I kind of just sent it honestly, um, as this is going to be version 14.1, and I plan on doing a point two and potentially a point three as well, so. Um, but this is all very near field, like less than probably an inch and a half away from either the port or the cone, and then this one is actually at about three feet away from the um, whole enclosure. So the enclosure sits on the desk on the acoustic pad and then the measurement microphone was sitting about three feet away and this is the results of that. As we can see it's significantly quieter um, which I mean sound does fall off and I think the inverse square law um, as you add distance it falls off at an inverse square law. So that's to be expected. Um, but overall, the curve does match as we kind of extend out into the room, which means it has decent projection into the room. Um, so on the play test, I did, I this whole video actually, I've got a new microphone as well to actually record 
my audio with along with the speaker's play test. So I really hope that that comes across a lot clearer than it has as I was using a like $30 microphone or $25 microphone. And now I'm using a Scarlet Studio, which I don't know if it's a top tier microphone by any means, but it's, it's, it's got to be better than what I have been using. So hopefully my um, audio comes across better and cleaner, and then hopefully the sound from the speaker comes across more clear. Um, from the current listening tests I've done on my stuff, it sounds better, but um, I know that sometimes people be listening on phones and stuff, and I don't know how well this will translate onto a phone until I actually get the video produced and uploaded and it goes through all its compression and then I can actually listen to it on my phone. So I really hope that the audio comes off really good on this. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this. Uh, hey, so now we've looked at the REW and the DATS information. Um, we've kind of seen that there's that weird little dip at 50 hertz. Um, after talking to Paul from Polymate 3D, he's kind of pointed me in the direction of the reason that the port seems to cover up that 50 hertz is because that's kind of the frequency, the resonant frequency of some things. And so that's when the speaker is receiving the most um, resistance, and so that's why it won't produce those sounds, but the box is then producing those sounds in that area. So that's why I'm getting my 50 hertz note out of the porthole and not out of the cone. So, um, yeah, after talking to him, he kind of cleared that up for me. But yeah, um, overall, I think that this project is a really good step forward and it builds a really good foundation to start creating some future projects on. Um, I finally got the motor kind of where I want it, um, power-wise, at that 1.5 Tesla meters. That seems like a very good entry-level motor to me to start building a really good suspension around and then playing around with some cone sizes and different cone shapes and um, different kind of geometries based around this motor. So that's kind of going to be the focus of the next speaker building videos. Um, it'll be focused around this motor design. So, yeah, that's kind of the plan moving forward. Um, I have another video in the works. I'm not going to spoil too much about it. But yeah, it's going to be really different from what's usually on this channel, which may be a good or bad thing depending on what you find interesting. But, but that is all I have for today, guys. Um, yeah. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, uh, it really helps the channel grow. And yeah, um, talk to you guys later.